Welcome to the Winter Series number nine. Where we show you how to keep the faith with the right bait and the right tactics. To catch yourself some carp this winter. We will be fishing a whole new host of venues. So sit back, grab yourself a cuppa, because here comes Winter Series number nine. What a lovely way to kick off Winter Series 9 with a lovely scaly carp like this. We're over at Bramblemere in the Cotswold Water Park and this is the first bite for me and what a lovely one it is. Caught over a little bit of broken up bug, crumb, a little bit of insect meal. We'll go into the bait in a bit more detail a bit later and this just came first thing this morning at first light. So why don't we skip back to yesterday when we got here. I'm not on my own on this trip, there's a few of us here. So uh, let's skip back to when we got here and we'll let the events unfold from there. Right, I'll go first. Okay, what you got? Number four. <laughs> Nick's on number four. Ollie's on number two. Child, look at him. No excuses now, pal. <laughs> Well, jaw's been done then, boys. All happy? Not really. Well, you're not very happy, no, because it's a bit windy <laughs> well, on your bank, isn't it? <laughs> I've gone on the windiest bank you can possibly imagine. Well, you were forced on there. Yeah, I was forced yeah, on there. Yeah, you come yeah, out fourth, did you? You come out second. Perry come out first. I come out oh, third. And I've done the oh, well, first pick and come out last. I'll never do any well on a draw, I'm telling you, <laughs> ever. No pressure when you come And you go, I looked in the no, bag, didn't you? Yeah, looked in the bag and still picked the yeah, last pick one. The ball. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what you you were out first, so well, that was my boilies with the numbers on, so I was bouncing. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, you knew what shape what <laughs> which one anything. was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just held one in his hand that little bit longer, so you which one was the warm <laughs> one? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, so we sort of done the draw, didn't we, for a bank each. So we've yeah. all got a bank each. I'm on the far bank over there. Lee's obviously come this side and yeah. Perry's um, over there. Yeah, bank. so you're on the bank. As soon as you come into the actual pond, you're on the left-hand side. Yeah. I'm on the bank straight in front Ooh, of you. There was one. That's on your bank, Perry. Oh, pal. He's in the fire. Two fish I've seen there now. Yeah, that's, yeah we saw one good. earlier yeah. on, didn't that's we? That's the main reason I chose that bank, because there was one showed when we walked round. Um, the wind's been blowing slightly that way, so yeah. it's all had to go on, really. It's yeah, a slightly yeah. shallower end, which is might not be ideal for winter, mm. but just our fish It's been fairly mild, though, this week, It has been, it? yeah. So, yeah. and I don't think there's much difference in the depth. So. I don't think it's a very deep lake, either. Not really. No, like eight foot around so, I, think. I think this is the deepest bit down in the far is corner it? here, yeah. I think the, we walked around with the bailiff this morning, he said it was like 10 foot here, but then, obviously, it just shallows off as it gets towards Perry sort mm. of thing, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, the fact that we got a whole bank each, there's plenty of us all to yeah, go at. We've got loads of room, haven't we, between yeah. us, which is nice. So, I've yeah. got that little bay to my right as well. Yeah. So hopefully at some point in the week, they might push in there. And that'll yeah, be, yeah. That looks nice up that corner. does do a lovely little bay with them reeds. Oh, the yeah. Torn between mine and that one. It's yeah. meant to be deep yeah. in there as well, I think, in that little bay. Is it? Yeah, well, we'll soon so, find yeah. out when I start thrashing it to a foam with a lid. Right, well, we better get all set up because as it is with the winter series, obviously you're always chasing the light. So I think it led off to all of our swims, get everything set up. Okay, well, right hander has gone. This is actually the second bite I've had off this spot. First day, first evening, should we say. We're only, it's only about nine o'clock now. And yeah, the right hander's gone. Left hander went earlier on, but unfortunately he weeded himself up and then fell off a bit like what this one's done. It's weeded himself up and I'm just hoping He's not going to fall off either. So there's a lot of weed about still. Loads and loads of weed about at the minute, which has been a bit of a problem for me in this swim. But it's not as if I haven't had weeded fish before. So let's just hope that patience gets him back out. Fingers crossed. But yeah, it's nice to know that that spot that I've chose out there which isn't the biggest spot in the world it was uh it was hard work led in about earlier on to find a spot it's done me a couple of bites on the first day so you know that says it all really i just hope that i can get this one in fingers crossed I 
was a giant perch down here earlier on. Ah, oh, there he is. But he's out there. See him, yeah. Come on, you. Out you come. Mad how much weed about still, considering how what time of year it is. Hmm. <laughs> Left hand is bleeping now. Oh, there we go. Let's move a little bit then. Right, well, just taking the tension out of the line at the minute. Just let that go a bit. Tightening back up. Now I'm fishing three rods on a spot out there. Hence why you can hear the other rods bleeping. I'm worried that he's wiped the middle rod out. So I'm just gonna put him back on the rest. Not gonna give it too much on the clutch, but just trying to be patient with it as much as I can really. So we'll see what happens. We'll just leave it for a few minutes and then assess the situation then. But yeah, I hate having to do this to be honest. It does work every now and then. It's just being a patient, which I'm not very good at, which most of us aren't when we got fish on, of course, but yeah, it's one of them. Let's just hope he comes back out. Comes the perch. Come on, fish, please, just come out. Be kind to me. Can the weed be this strong still this time of the year? Oh, he's off. Damn. Oh, it's painful. Painful. sometime in the early hours and we've had a bite. Right well, and Rod's just picked up tight and just started busting off. He's quite close in now, he's just a small comment. There we go. Bite number two for me. This came not too long after redoing that rod after my first bite first thing this morning. Five spawns of bait back over the spot. The cast went bang on the first time as well, which was great. The coots have been a little bit of a nightmare on me because I'm fishing in quite shallow water. And then not long after they pulled off, this one turned up. So uh, very happy with him. Proper long common, this one as well. 
So yeah, I'm gonna get a couple of photos, slip her back, and hopefully bite number three won't be too far away. Bye-bye. All right, where's number three? Oh, well, good morning. I am licking me wounds a little bit this morning, let me tell you. Um, now, I've gone back to using the solid bags that I haven't actually used for a long, long time, to be honest. I started using them early spring, had quite a few decent fish on it as well, and for some reason just stopped using them. So I thought for this trip, use them. It's very rare I lose fish on them. And I've lost two, two on the pounds. Oh, it's painful just weeded me up. I'm so surprised at how much weed is about. That water is freezing cold, and yet the weeds in places is near enough to the surface. So I had two fish go, just dart straight into the weed, absolutely solid from the minute that I picked the rod up and not been able to get them out. I've did all the tricks of the trade that we use to obviously get fish out, you know, put the rod down, let them think they get away of it, let it, let the rod go slack, lean back, pull, uh, pulled and pulled and pulled. And unfortunately, in the end, the fish just came off. So yeah, I'm absolutely gutted that I've had two hook pulls because that is not a great start, is it? Definitely not. So one of them things, I guess, at least I'm getting bites on that spot. So fingers crossed, just need to get to the rod a little bit sooner. Need to be, have me wits about me a little bit more, I think. So. I'm hopeful that I'm going to get more bites sometime, either this morning or later on today, definitely. No. Come round here. Where's he going? <laughs> He's right here. <sighs> well, it's all a bit of a mad rush, this. Um, obviously, we lost that one last night. We've now finally got ourselves on. <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh, finally landed one. So we've had uh, a couple of losses, unfortunately, but um, made up for it with that one. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, lovely. <sighs> Finally, finally got one, thank God. Now, Bramblemere is obviously renowned for its scaly ones and rah, not getting much more scalier than that, are you? <laughs> 18 pound exactly, this one went. And he come in really easy as well, which is making me wonder, them ones that I lost, them couple that I lost in the week last night, were they bigger ones? But who knows, nice to get one on the bank all the same. So fingers crossed, plenty more of these to come today for not only myself, the rest of the lads as well. But a lovely start to the winter series nine, <laughs> wicked. <sighs> Beautiful. Away. Nice, nice.
here we go then. Fish number two, nice to get a mirror as well, which is what this place is renowned for, these lovely, beautiful mirrors like this one. 17 pounds, and that spot is certainly rocking now. So fingers crossed, there's plenty more of these ones to come yet. Wicked. Beautiful. That water is freezing. Right, so a little morning update from me. Obviously, I've had them two bites this morning, which, um, yeah, really great to get off the mark and so soon as well. So I'm chuffed to bits with that. Both of them have come off in the main spot. Um, I've got another rod in the swim to my right, which is in that bay that I mentioned at the start. Um, and it looks perfect for a bite in there, but ever since I put that rod out, I've not, I've had like one liner last night and it's done nothing since. So the coots have been hammering my spot out here and I know it's fairly shallow water. It's a bit deeper out there, but I'm sort of worrying that maybe something's not quite right with that spot. So I'm going to whiz that rod in, just check the rig, that kind of thing and redo that. And also I'm probably going to need to redo those rods soon as well because those coots have picked up both rods. And I just want to double check that them hook baits are all right. Top the spot back up because they've probably cleaned out a fair bit of bait as well. I want to make sure that everything's bang on but when that time carp do move back in, I want to make sure I'm getting a bite straight away. So sort myself out and uh, yeah, get them rods sorted and then just see it out for the day and see what happens next. Bite number three is a little bit bigger for me. About 22 and a half, this one. Lovely little patch of scales near his head down there as well. So uh, he'll be very recognizable when it's 10 or 20 pound bigger one day. Uh, but yeah, I was chatting to the owner earlier in the uh, evening. Guess I've got no idea what time of night this is, but at some point yesterday evening, I caught up with him briefly and he said there's loads of 20 pounders in here. So this is probably about the average that what, we, what you should be catching on this lake. Um, hopefully even a little bit bigger. So uh, yeah, I've got the rod back out. It's really hard as well, because it's such a dark night and I'm trying to see the tree line on the far bank. I'm basically aiming for where Perry's bivvied up to. Um, it's been really tough, but luckily enough, that rod went straight back out first time. So uh, yeah, I've got the lights on the house behind and I can aim for those. So it is making life a little bit easier. A couple of spots back over the top and yeah, fingers crossed. This isn't the only one of the night for me, but yeah, well happy to get a 20 pounder now. It seems like that spot is well and truly rocking.
really don't go that way. There we go. <laughs> Poor old Vin's been running her up and down the bank all night. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Other one in the bag. New tree in me swim in the background. <laughs> nice. <sighs> yeah, I was in me bed and I was like, I could hear all this bloody rustling and all that. I was thinking, what is that? And then I was looking out and I was like, I swear that tree is moving. And I put my head torch on it and it come down. <laughs> Right, well, I'm going to put this one in the sling quickly because it's only, well, it's about seven o'clock in the morning, so it's only going to be light in about three quarters of an hour. So I'm going to put him in the sling because I can see in the background that Ollie's got one on as well. <laughs> Got another bite off of that spot. Actually, feels like a bit of a better fish as well, which is nice. Absolutely busted off as always. I don't think he's too far out, which is good. I've been feeding some perch in the edge as well. It's like three or four little perch right in the edge of my swim. I put little bit of bug crumb down there and uh they've been troughing <laughs> so that was a bit of evening entertainment don't want none of that Jesus, where are you going? Sometimes it's them lights. You get, especially in clear water, when you get them closer in, they get a glimpse of the light, catches their eye, and then they just go mental, and then they just go on another mad run. You watch, you'll probably do it again in a sec. I don't want to give up, does he? Get his head up. Get a bit of air in you. There we go. That's the one. In you go. Lovely jubbly. <coughs> oh, bit chilly in here. Out here, rather. Oh, oh yeah. He's got some big old scales on him. Lovely jubbly. check that out for a carp just over 25 pound had this just on first light slightly before and uh looking around for the cameraman and he was over filming moz with a fish and then i've had this one pretty much at the same time but what a carp that is absolutely mega this is what you come to bramble mere for gin clear waters and dark scaly carp like this absolutely mega 
and I was having a bit of a tough time trying to work out where my spot was at night and I almost didn't re-chuck the rod. Um, and working out where the lights are on the house in the distance, managed to get another cast out there and just like the last one, this one went bang on first time. So if I didn't reach out that rod, I would never have caught this one. So yeah, very important to get that rod straight back out on the money. Another four bombs over the top. And then yeah, had this one to wake up to. Happy, happy days. Here you go, one last look at him before we send him on his merry way. Mwah. Go and make someone else happy one day. <laughs> right, I'm getting out of this water, it's freezing. Right, we're now finished my morning coffee. It's a perfect opportunity to run through the bait mix that I've been using this trip and to great effect as well. So in this bucket here, I'll start off with a bit of crayfish mini mix and crayfish maxi mix. Nothing else in it, just off the back, just straight in the bucket first. And then what I'm adding to that in this bucket, I've got a load of bug 15 millers. And what I've done here a couple of weeks before the trip, I, I actually did this for a trip a couple of weeks back on a, on a previous filming trip. I doused them in loads of the Calanus Hydro, let that soak overnight. And then the following morning I come back to them and then I just add a little tiny glaze over the top of it if it looks like they've dried off a bit. And I douse them with a load of insect meal. I put in small bits, bit at a time, close the bucket lid, shake the bucket rounds loads and then just keep adding the insect meal as I need to so that what you get here is just like a, almost like an active hook bait. They've got like a real dusting and a, a crust over the top of them. But what I do with those baits, I don't add them in hull. I don't use cutters or choppers or crummers or anything like that. I literally just in my hands and I'm literally breaking them between my thumb and my forefinger. By doing this, I'm just getting a, such a variety of different bits, pieces, sizes. I'm getting halves, quarters, bits of crumb, a couple of whole ones where they fall through your hands. And I'm just chucking loads of them in as I go. And I can, by doing this, I can literally make up a mix for what I'm about to spot out. So I'm not leaving it all in the bucket to stew and go a bit funny. I'm doing it fresh as I go. So if I want to put about 10 spots worth out, I do that as I go, knock a mix up and it goes straight out. So I'll be breaking loads of those up into a bucket like so. Some are harder, some are softer, that kind of thing. In they go. After that, I'll then add in a little bit more of the Calanus Hydro. But what I do do is I do that at the end. Another thing that I'm introducing on this mix on this trip, I'm coming into the colder months, I want a little bit of natural element to the bait just to bring it through and just make it that little bit more attractive. I have got with me a small amount of maggot. So all I'm doing with this is I'm just a few handfuls into the bucket as I go. And then on top of that, I'm then adding the Calanus Hydro. And what that's doing is it's just adding a little bit of weight to the maggot as well, because they can drift a lot as well, especially if you've got a bit of a crosswind. So I'll just douse that into the lake, into the, the bucket as well. Again, you don't need a lot, because I've already got a bit on the um, on the bug boilies, and I just want to give the maggots and the pellet a nice little glaze round. So that'll go through and mix around. And then once all of the pellet, the maggot, and the uh, boilie has got that thin glaze over it. I'm then bringing the final element and probably my favorite ingredient for the last couple of years is the insect meal. I always get this in big bags. I can use it on stick mixes, on the baits, on the boilies like this as well. It's so versatile. And I definitely think this has caught me more fish this year. Um, it's definitely brought in a whole new element to my angling. And then I'll just give that a light dusting over the top, do exactly the same as what I do to the boilies. Sh close the lid, shake it up, go mad open the lid up. If it looks like it's all dry, I want it to look dry. I don't want it to look really wet. I want the insect meal to suck all the Calanus Hydro in and form a crust around all the pellet, the maggot and everything. And then I'll just flick a little bit in there. Again, a little bit at a time. I don't want to waste the insect meal. I don't want to do it and then have a pile of insect meal at the bottom of the bucket for this purpose. It's only a small amount in there. I can just shake it around. Just looking to still a little bit wet. So I'll do the same again. Little bit more, again, just small amounts, little and often, shake it round. Yeah, that's looking perfect, that. Nice, looks like a fairly dry mix. You've got a little bit of that natural element in there, a little bit of the pellet, the boilies, just got a real variety of mixes. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. So that's the mix that I've been using on this trip. It's a mix that I've used countless times throughout the year. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm self-employed. I can't go week in, week out. I can't do three, four nights a week. My trips are so staggered, they're so sporadic throughout the year. 
I need to know that what bait mix I'm using, I can be confident in, and I don't need to worry about the bait or anything like that wherever I take it. And I've taken it to a variety of different venues. I introduced the maggot towards the colder months. You don't really need it in the spring and summer, but it's still the same base to that mix. And I can chop and change if I want to add or take away any little bits, but I've got that base there that I do the same with each ingredient and each part that just gives me confidence time and time again. It's just something I don't need to worry about. Right, now onto the rig that I've been using over the spot. And exactly the same with my, my bait mix and everything. I don't get a lot of trips. I don't want to be faffing around trying to chop and change my rigs. I literally have two rigs that I use for every bit of my fishing, pop-up or bottom bait. Be fishing on the deck with this trip. So starting down this end, we've just got my faithful combi rig. I've used it time and time again for the last couple of years now, and it has never failed me. Excellent hook holds, and I'm really confident that if a fish picks it up, nine times out of 10, that's getting nailed. I always get great hook holds with it. It's quite versatile as well. What I do down the bottom end there by the hook on the tubing, rather than just putting a length of hair and a knot, I, I just tie a rig ring on the end. That basically allows me to put any shape, size hook bait I want on there. Now, normally if you're tying a rig, like a blowback rig or anything, you're gonna have a length of that hair depending on what size hook bait you want. I might wanna use an 18 or a 20 miller at points. I might wanna use a snowman that might be a bit longer, or I might just wanna use a tiny little wafter or, or tie something on at the bottom of it. So that just means that I don't have to keep tying loads of different rigs depending on my hook bait. I can tie a load of these, keep them in a the rig safe and use any hook bait I want. Going from that hook point, that's a size four wide gape hook. I trap the hair in place with a little bit of silicon tubing. And then that comes up to a bit of shrink tube or a kicker in this case, they pretty much do the same thing. And then a bit of uncoated uh, braid there. Um, I use the coated braid and strip it. I just, I just like the braid that I'm using at the moment rather than using something else. Um, and that's tied together to a bit of fluorocarbon there with an all bright knot hidden behind a little blob of putty there. And because of that fluorocarbon, the stiffness of that fluorocarbon, and I've got a slow sinking hook bait on there. That's just a bug hard hooker. I chop about a third off the top of it, and then I've got half a bug half tone pop up at the top of that. So that's just gonna sit upright. And again, to bring that natural element into the hook bait, I've just tied on about five maggots onto the top of it. So that's gonna, hook's gonna lay flat on the lake bed like so. And then that hook bait's just gonna sit directly above the hook, just masking the, the, the hook, if you like. I've got four ounce lead on the end of that, and that's just going onto a bit of lead free leader. Nice and simple fishing. The lead free leader is probably just long enough just to protect the fish in the fight get that little end pinned down and I've got a little bit of fluorocarbon leader onto the braided main line. So there we go, that's the rig, pretty simple fishing. If I wanted to use a pop-up, I'd be using a hinge or something, but on the deck is the one, especially over that bait mix, get them grubbing around in that silt, job done. Served me well on this trip. Well, good morning. And as you can see, it's a lovely morning because we're playing one. Uh -huh. Right hand has gone. Obviously, middle one went not so long ago. And now the right hand has gone. You know, it's obviously, when you're fishing free on a spot, you tend to get bites quite quick, one after the other sort of thing. So. What I'll probably do is just, well, it's whether that rod's been wiped out. I think he's touched the line and the bobbin's down a little bit. So might have to redo this one, this left-hander. But yes, yeah, a very pleasant morning all the same to be playing yet another Bramblemere Carp. Oh, he's a better one than what I've been having. Come on, come on. Yeah, nice. Nice. Oh, he's a banger. Oh, he's lovely. He's lovely. Ha <laughs> ha 
This is why we come to Bramblemere. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. Absolute belter. Scaly, scaly, scaly one. I'm so glad I managed to get one that Bramblemere is renowned for. And that is absolute wood carving. I'm sure you would all agree. Mid 20 and obviously them plastic hook baits, which are soaked in that sticky sweet and S7, done me well for years, kept it quiet for years as well. So uh, yeah, you should be privileged that I've let you in on that little secret. <laughs> but wow, I've just absolutely lost for words with this one, because that is a serious, serious carp. And I'm buzzing, I finally managed to get one that this place is amazing for. So yeah, wow, wicked, absolutely wicked. Thank you, Bramblemere. <laughs> Look at him. How about that for a carp? Thank you very much. <laughs> We just landed that fish. So here is the setup that I have been using. Now, you might not see me using solid bags a lot really, or tend to keep it on the down low when I do use them because nine times out of 10, get a lot of bites off of them and a lot of big ones as well. Now, I let you in on a little secret of what I like to soak my plastics in. Now, I knew from research of Bramblemere that there was a lot of crayfish in here, so I thought, plastic hook baits are going to be the way forward. Now, something I've had my hook baits soaked in, or my plastic ones, whether that be zig foam, any sort of imitation bait, then a little secret that I have been using for many years now is the sticky sweet liquid. Now, when I first joined DNA and was using the sticky sweet, it was quite thick. It was a really sort of thick, gloopy liquid, which wasn't ideal for my plastic. So what I used to use, or what I do use, is the Intensed Booster to thin them out a little bit. So I mix the two together. Now, the Secret 7 has a very sweet smell to it as well, especially the booster. You can obviously use any, any of the other boosters in the range. We've got a vast variety of different boosters you could use. But I like the S7 booster because that just gives you a really nice peach sort of aroma to it. So I mix the two together and that's what I have my plastic sat in. Now I used to do that, obviously mixing the booster, not only to enhance the flavor as well, but just to thin out that sticky sweet liquid. Well, in recent years, that's now changed. So the sticky sweet would be absolutely perfect on its own. But if you want to sort of pimp it up a little bit and use, you know, some of the flavors that we have in the range, especially the PB, that's a great one as well. I know that's one that Bart uses. Now, I just like that S7 because that's what I started using with my plastics and it's put me in good stead for many, many years as well. So that's what I have my imitation baits soaked in. Now, what you'll notice on that tiny bit of pink plastic there is I've got some pinky sat right on the top and inside that bit of plastic is a size 14 hook. So you just pull the hook out, feed your maggots on top, and then pull that little size 14 hook back into the plastics. Hook never comes out of that, by the way. You know, I've had a lot of people saying to me, oh, you know, that, that hook could come out. It never, ever, ever does. So once it sits inside that bit of plastic, that's where it stays. Now, the solid bag rig is that little beauty there. Now. I have to thank Joe Morgan for this, to be honest, because it, he was the first person I saw using this rig. And I've never been a fan of the solid bag rig because I've lost a lot of fish using it with just like the standard hair or silicon on the hook. And I just sort of steered away from it because of that. But when I saw Joe using this, I thought, do you know what, that's a bit of me. And my first time ever using it, I braced it with a couple of 40s from Sandhurst. So 
it's very rare you lose fish on this on this rig although i started the trip off not so well i just knew that you know perhaps it was just the weed you know something other than the rig was the reasons why i'd lost them too and i think that was because they were weeded up for so long but obviously i've had a lot of bites on it now and it's put a lot of fish on the bank for me this trip so that is a size four wide gate beaked carp hook and as you'll notice it's actually set up with it's almost like would that be a german rig i would say but i've actually pulled the bead right the way back to where the eye is there and as you'll notice when you pick that hook bait up that hook is poised so that it will catch hold of the bottom lip straight away and that's what i like about it is the fact that when that hook goes up that that hook point is in that position right there so that's obviously finished off with a bit of silicon tube in there and it's kicked right back as well and that again just aids in the hooking properties i'm using a 35 pound natural hook link there and that has got a big blob of putty dead center and again just aids with that hooking properties so the lead setup that i'm using that is a fox impact lead and as you'll notice, the rig is coming dead center of the actual lead itself. So they're feeling the full weight of that lead the minute that that hook link tightens up in the fish's mouth. Now that's fish drop off style. So as soon as that tightens up, the bottom insert falls away like so. And then the top insert there, that slips away and the lead is away. Because it's quite weedy here, I want to be dropping the leads. So that is the system that I use. That's just running straight through on the main line. So there's no lead cores allowed here. I think you're allowed um, unleaded, but I've just chose to use that all the way through and that's always put me in good stead. So inside the actual solid bag itself, how I start the bag is in the very bottom, I put some crayfish mini mix in there. I then place my hook bait inside the bag and then mask the rest of the hook bait with the crayfish mini mix as well. So you've got roughly about two, three centimeters of crayfish mini mix in the bottom. I then put some of our bug meal inside and then I fill the rest of the bag up with pinkies and maggots. So that's what I've got inside my solid bags, which again, you know, has done me well this trip. And then inside the actual boat, you'll see I've been using my bait boat. The bait that I'm actually putting inside the boat is my bug mill maggots. Now, right at the start of the trip, I put a load of bug meal over the maggots. That helps keep them dry. Not only that, they'll eat all them fine little particles as well. So they get a bit of that bug meal flavor inside them. And then I'm just putting three scoops of maggots in the boat with the solid bags. And that is what's done me all these fish so far. Well, here we go. Left hander has busted off. It's taken a little bit longer than what the bites were coming yesterday for some reason or other, but the good thing is, is he's going left of the swim because I have been worried about this tree since it went in last night, everything's gone right. So I'm sort of pulling to the right, which normally keeps the fish to the left. So I'm hoping he stays on the line that he's on at the minute, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'd love to get this one in, especially after having that beautiful scaly one that we just put back. As well as that, I had an 18 pound mirror just before that scaly one this morning, which you would have seen me land in the dark as well. So let's hope we can get this one in, fingers crossed. Very be liver.
Well, I just sat down to have a bite to eat. I've been saying to Vinny, we were going to grab a bite to eat and I was going to redo my rods because I've been hammered by the coots again on this spot and I've not had a daytime bite anyway. So I just thought, oh, we're just freshen everything up, get it ready for later on. Literally just sat down, chucked my phone on charge and that left hand rod's just absolutely melted off. The coots have only left that spot about 30 seconds before I had the bite. It's just trying to get under my margin now. But it's nice to get a daytime bite. Sort of thinking it was a nighttime area. So uh, yeah, this is a very welcome surprise. I think that's a double. Still a little bit nervous playing them on braid. Yeah, it's a little gump a bit. That's bite. You're up with that. Well, I've just been just about to get that fish out. We just had it on the mat, ready to show that one to camera. And um, I had no rods in the water because unfortunately, shortly after this one, I lost one on the other rod. So I hadn't put the rods out. Um, Moz had had a bite. So they were over there sorting that one out and I thought I'd just fling two singles back on the spot so I had something out there because the fish had clearly turned up. And uh, just as we decided to get that fish out, right hand rod's gone. So very good idea of mine putting them back out. It's a time this time of year, you get such a small window of opportunity sometimes to get your bites. Definitely got to make the most of it. There's obviously a group of fish that have just turned up. So. Yeah, nice bit of action during the day. It's on the surface out there now. He's another, he's not bad that one. Oh, go on. Oh wow, I've just seen the scales on it. That's a lovely dark one. Come on, in you go. He's definitely not a bad one. He's moving some water, isn't he? There he is. God, you don't want to give up like the last one. It's the trouble, it's really easy to start rushing it at this point. And that's, that's when you can end up popping the hook out or something, so. Just take it nice and easy, let the fish do what it wants to do and tire itself out. Last thing I want to do now is lose it. In she goes. Oh, that'd do very nice. He's a lovely one, he is. Well, another bite and another absolute belter of a Bramble Mere Carp at 26 pound. Uh, this was another quick bite for me after um, having that fish I had before. And that was probably a oh, easy tiger. That was probably a low 20. And um, 
we're pretty sure that might be an original, that one, it's proper old crusty thing, but had a bit of a nasty bit of sort of bacterial infection on one side. So we treated that with a bit of propolis, got him straight back as soon as possible, took a couple of photos of it to send a bailiff. And yeah, and then shortly afterwards, this one's turned up and check him out. Absolutely buzzing with this one, mega. Nothing's happened for me last night. The boys have had a couple of nice ones. Ollie's had a really good one down to my left. I think all, a lot of the fish are on the back of the window at the minute. Lee's seen a load in a bay to the left of him. I'm gonna have a quick pack up and get round there because I think I've got a better chance around there. I ain't seen nothing on this wind. And I've been here for two days now. Apart from that lost fish, nothing else has happened. I ain't even had no liners or nothing. So I'm gonna get everything wrapped up now, get round there, find a quick spot, and um, get them all ready for tonight. Just got in my new swim, all my base camp set up. I borrowed Lee's boat, because the echo sander on it, it's unreal. Uh, I've gone out there, I found a spot in amongst all the weed out there. It's like a nice bark, goes down to six foot with um, weed all around it pretty much, quite a weedy lake. But I've seen a fish out there already, so I'm gonna get these three rods out there as quick as I can, because I can really do with a fish now. I'm getting right shown up. Bait wise, I'm using eight mil bug and some bug pellet. Just putting that in there. And in this bucket, just got some um, crushed bug boily, some crushed switch, some eight mil pellet bug, and some crayfish mini mix. Hopefully, with a new choice of swim, I should have one. And Lee said he's seen a few last night. So it's looking good for a bite. I reckon I should have one in a couple of minutes, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Right, well, we're going into our last night of this trip now. I've had this rod in this bay ever since we got here, and it's not done anything. I've had a couple of liners, but that's it. Thought there'd be fish in here, thought it was gonna like produce a big one off the side or anything like that, but no. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wind this in. The spot I'm fishing out there where I've had all my bites on is a really small spot, but if I do it in the hours of daylight, I can probably drum three top rods really tight, sort of within six foot, all three rods. And then in the night, if one of them goes, I'll leave that rod off and then I'll just have the two fish in that I can rechuck. And that just, hopefully, that might nick me a bonus fish and I might get three bites in the night instead of two. So best to just maximize. I'm gonna wind this rod in, get these rods wrapped up. I've got about an hour left of daylight, get everything out in the spot, top the spot back up, get the bait out there. And then that's it, I'm set for the night then. And then fingers crossed we can get that extra bite.
See so that? If that didn't look like, if that looked like that was going to go too far left or too far right, I would have just stopped the line instantly and pulled the rod back. I don't care if I drop the bait down here somewhere. I just don't want to drop it in the weed either side of the spot. I want to make sure that all of that bait goes on that hump that I'm fishing on. Really important to keep it accurate. Finally got one. We're on the last night now. Never wanted to get a fish in so bad. There's weed everywhere, so I'm just trying to keep a bit of tension on it. Don't feel a bad one though. We just had a curry. Just come back to the swim from next door and Lee's swim. And the rod was away. It's gone in a bit of weed at the minute. I see it's come out now. I think they dived their heads down in the weed. Because they seem to come out of the weed, but they've got no, um, you end up with no weed on your line. Like normally they get a bit of weed over their reds and they come straight in. We were saying it must be quite thick the weed here. Keep them away from them other lines. <laughs> you in there. Yes. Well, that's good at that. Finally got one in the net. After watching Lee and Holly absolutely haul them. Holly. <laughs> See the white pop up sticking out of his mouth. Happy days. He's over mid 20 here, isn't he? The move's paid off. Rod's been out about three and a half hours, I'd say. And I've got myself a nice mirror. Just got the rod back out. I've heard a couple over the spot. So hopefully there's a couple more tonight. Yeah, this was the one on the um, Milky Malt, 12 mil pop-up on the Ronnie rig. And yeah, that one's done the joke do so far. Happy days. Get this one slipped back and hopefully hope for some more. Thank you.
Well, this has been a very productive morning for me. Three bites in very quick succession at around first light. This being one of two lovely mirrors. This one's just shy of 24 pound. So uh, very, very pleased with this one. And I've got another one to show you yet. Brilliant. Right, well all three of my rods are now wrapped up ready to go out there and I like to just get all of them ready and cast them all at the same time especially where that spot's so small I don't want to cast one then try and wrap up the other one and then cast the other because I want to be focused on that tree line marker and know exactly where everyone's sitting I want them literally like a foot two foot apart um, and that spot as well just going into that spot obviously we've done what three nights here going into a longer trip or whatever when you turn up to these venues and all that it can be really easy just to turn up and be just oh just get the rods out quick as possible like the time it takes to to just spend an hour at the start of the swim like that that's what i did when i got in here straight away i've just got the leading rod out left all the fishing rods flat and i've just focused on finding that spot and there's a lot of weed out there there's a lot of there's a lot of weed in this swim in general and it's there's a bit of an egg box in here as well you've got a lot of like humps some gullies that kind of thing to try and find and I've just spent a good bit of time just making sure I knew exactly what was out there. I don't mind thrashing the lead to a foam because I've got time. I've got time to sit on the baited area and wait for the fish to come to me. It's not like I'm doing an overnighter. And I know that that area I've got is only a less than a rod length, probably only six foot or so wide. And either side of that, I'm getting weed. If I go to, if I go to the right of where the right hand rod lands, it's in weed. If I go to the left of where the left hand rod lands, that's in weed. So I've got a very small window. And the same with the baiting, I've popped the float up I'm casting to the float and making sure that I'm hitting that float every time within a foot or two, just keeping everything as tight as possible. And if you take your time at the start of the session to do that, that spot's now done me a number of fish. You know, we're going into, we're in the winter now, it's cold weather. The bailiff even said, you know, bites can be a bit, you know, hard to come by this time of year on this lake. And, you know, I, I put that down to finding the spot you know, taking the time to find the spot properly rather than just flicking bags out and just hoping for the best. Because nine times out of 10, especially in this swim, they could have been landed in weed. A lot of the rigs, if I, if I know for a fact, there's a certain drop I need on that spot. If I don't get that drop, it's coming straight back in. Even if in flight, if it looks like it's going too far wide, no, it's not worth it. Just wind it in, get it straight back, get it bang on the money. Be 100% confident in where you're fishing. And then, yeah, trips like this can, uh, can happen for anyone. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get all three of these rods out, make sure they're bang on the money. And I'm also just going to double check that, that tree line marker for the horizon as well, because I had a little bit of grief with that last night. And I just want to make sure that's bang on. I'm going to get these three rods out, get fishing again. Well, morning update from me. Kettle's on, fish on. I don't think it's very big. I've just seen it flop, it pretty much on the bite, it flopped out on the surface. So I'm gonna get this one in. And funny enough, this is on the middle rod as well. The last fish was on a middle rod and I managed to re-chuck it first time straight between the two, which I was well chuffed with. And then it's gone again. So yeah, 
a very good morning for me on the last morning until I've got to go back to work later. Well, that is a pick of the bunch for me this morning in a flurry of action and only my second common of the trip. I don't know whether there's not many commons in here or not, but at just shy of 24 pound, he's a mega one, isn't he? This has been a really, really great trip for me. One I'll certainly remember for a long time and just goes to show that little mix that I've got is doing the do time and time again for me, coupled with those rigs and hook baits. Really, really great trip. Can't wait to come back to Bramble Mere and catch some more of these stunning, stunning carp. Oh, good morning. The right hander has gone, the swim's gone very quiet for some reason or other. I don't quite know why. I've just said to the cameraman, I re-dropped this rod yesterday, not this sort of time yesterday. I did all, re refreshed all three rods. And then obviously the left hander went, we had a small little scaly one on that. So we put him back and yeah, it's been quiet since. Really, really odd. I think Ollie's, carried on ticking away with the bites. So yeah, it's a nice welcome sight for the right hand to go, but not a very welcome sight. The fact he's weeded himself up. <laughs> but yeah, still nice to, nice to get a bite all the same. Fingers crossed we can get him in. He is coming slowly, very slowly. Well, well, he's not moving anymore, unfortunately. I was getting tiny, tiny bits back off of him, but he's gone solid. So just put him back on the rest on a fairly tight line as well. So we'll see if that gets him out. I hate it when this happens, especially this time of year. It's absolutely crazy that there's this amount of weed about, which I've probably said many times on this shoot. Um, but it's one of them things, so. Just really want to get this one in, you know, because this could quite possibly be the last fish of the trip for me. So let's hope we don't end it on a loss. Come on, fish, get out. Here he comes. Oh, he's come back under that rod. No, he's going to do me in this snag on the left here. Him. Now he's going to do me in that tree there. Oh, he's a lovely scaly one. Oh yeah, he's lovely. Oh yeah, hello. Hello. Come on, we want you in. Stop fighting, stop fighting. Come on you. Come on you. Come on you. Come on you. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. We don't like to end these trips on losses, so to get that one in the net, I am more than happy, let me tell you. God, thank God for that. Yes. What a lovely way to end it, Ball. Hey, boys. Definitely. I'm not so lovely for you, Val, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, oh, oh, is it going to go? No. Lovely 22 pounder, obviously, to end this first in the series of the Winter Series 9. Absolutely wicked. You've had plenty of bites, haven't you, Al? Yeah, I've had a few. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have had a few. And yeah, that's another fine example of the beautiful fish that are in Bramblemere. Mega.